are on the beautiful Warwickshire Avon, just, at, just outside Stratford on Avon. This is the stretch that's known as um, Seven Meadows. And I'm sat here on a beautiful peg. It's actually my favourite peg on the whole river. I've, I've fished it quite a lot of times. And it's full to the brim of these. Beautiful chub. Between four rounds and it up to six pound, but you don't catch many six pound on this peg. But it's one of those lovely pegs. It's right below the weir. It's all on gravels, full of oxygen. This time of year, it's absolutely perfect for fishing. June, July, August, and even into September. All the fish congregate in, in this really highly oxygenated water, and they love it. You can see them, that, you know, I'm flicking maggots in down here, and there's, there's dace and roach and perch about. All, you know, all the fish love it on beautiful gravels like this. So much oxygen, the water's lovely and clear. Quite difficult to fish, but what I'll try and do is explain exactly what I'm doing to catch fish. So it's an awkward peg because, as I say, it's very shallow and it's quite pacey. And then the water drops off, it gets a little bit deeper. So I'll come on to that later on anyway, but uh, let's see how we can get on, catch a few fish and have a really good day's fishing. River fishing definitely rewards anglers that work the hardest. And it's really, really important wherever you're fishing up and down the country to set plenty of gear up. It's not a tackle show, it's actually a necessary product. And you know, today as I say, I've, I've set up a waggler, I've set up two stick floats and I've set up a bomb rod as well. The bomb rod's there just in case. It, I probably won't use it today, but you never know. There's some barbel and some very, very big chub in this swim. And it's always good to just have one rod set up that you can drop a still bait over where you've fed a lot of bait. And this is the kind of swim where, you know, some big fish can really creep up on your feed and you've got to be geared up for them. To so say the set up this one waggler, two stick floats, and basically one of the stick floats is a, it's a four number four wire stem. It's about as light as I can get away with to cast over to the far side under the bushes, where is, which is where I want to be. In an ideal world, I could do with an even lighter stick foot, but I won't get over there and control the rig. One of the things about this swim is it's, it, it narrow, it's a narrow channel just below the weir. And the, the wind always funnels down. And because there's a depth change down my peg, got all this shallow water here and then it drops down to about five foot. What you get is you get the top of the water pushing and it's pushing your stick float and the, the, the th bottom third of your rig is actually trying to slow your stick float down so it's important to get stick float out, cast downstream, get behind it, try and ease it through so that you're in control of that stick float rather than the swim being in control. When you can get in control of your your gear on a river, that's when you are in control of catching fish. And that's what I'm trying to do at the moment. I'm actually trying to fathom out myself what is the best way to fish this peg. I've fished it before, but it's the flow changes all the time. You get three or four inches on, and it can be a completely different flow. We've got a lock cutting below us, and every time the lock opens, the flow changes. So it, it presents you with lots and lots of different scenarios. So I've caught a few fish on, the, on this little waggler. What I'm going to do now is just cross over and, and have a go on the stick. I don't feel like I'm catching enough fish at the moment to warrant fishing this all the time. So what I've got is I've got a 15 foot essential, which it might seem quite a, a long rod for this kind of fishing, but what it does is it gives you control. It gives you the perfect control you can hold the line up, you can get the, the, the line behind the float and be in control. And as I say, this is a four number four stick and I've, I've got a six number four, which basically I use to ca cast down the peg, fish in the deeper water, and hopefully catch some of those better chub. It, it, as I say, it's just a case of finding where they are in the swim. They can be anywhere, the flows, um, quite pacey and they might come right up onto the feeds, especially if there's lots of them. But if there's only a few feeding initially, 
you tend to find that they're further down the peg and a little bit deeper. Because there's lots and lots of small fish here, um, I always carry a few um, tears and what we call urid beans, which is like a, an Indian bean. Just different sizes. The urid beans are a bit smaller than the um, tear, so it's a good, good thing to have on. But, and what, what they are, they're really good for avoiding small fish. Now, don't get me wrong, I like to catch the small fish at times, but if you're fishing a swim like this and you know that there's big fish there, you want to be running a bait past those little fish so that you can actually get to the bigger fish. And it, it's a really good trick and it works a lot. It's a really good way of catching um, odd chub and quite a lot of the better roach as well. Just tend to fish them on a stick float, um, just under depth or just touching depth. It's a really good way of just sorting out better fish in your peg when, when there's lots of fish in your peg. Um, today I've been getting some silly bites and so I've just put a tear on. Just give it a couple of chucks and you never know, you might just snare that one better fish. I'm feeding lots and lots of casters of hemp. I'm not feeding maggots out there where I'm fishing because it's important. There you go, that was a bite. It was definitely a bite then, so that was probably a roach. But uh, I've caught plenty of chub on them before as well. You tend to catch a chub where, when it's falling through the water. The roach you catch as it's settled in and you're just holding it back. As I say, you know, maggot over there is a bit of a nightmare. I tend to like to feed casters and hemp, and I've got that option to fish hemp on the hook or even tears or urine beans on the hook just to get those extra few better fish. You can catch um, a lot of fish here on maggots as well but it's it's a case of double and treble maggot really to um, to make the most of it. Put a single maggot on you will catch small fish all day long. As I say just keep putting the hemp in and then you can fish with one of these beans over the top of them which work, works really really well. Reel lines are really important when you're fishing with stick floats and wagglers. When you're trying to get really good presentation, it's critical that you have the right line on. And often it's easy to fish with too heavy a line. And one of the things that a heavy line will do is it, it will slow your rig down without you wanting it to. It will, it will blow more in windy conditions and it'll be difficult to sink at the right times if you want it to sink. I tend to use 018 main lines for most of my fishing, maximum um, with wagglers and stick floats, certainly on, on days like this and on, on swims like this. Good old fashioned Maxima or, or something that's a bit more robust is a, is a really good line. It lasts a long time and it doesn't let you down and it's really, really important that you have that kind of line on your reel. You're reeling in. I don't know, up to a thousand times a day and it's going through your rod rings, it, you know, you're striking, it's going on the reel, off the reel, you get gunk on your line from certainly the suds and that off the water here. And it's, it's just important to have something that is reliable. Use the same on all the reels, it doesn't matter what size rig you're using, the lines stay the same, that diameter 18, nice and light, you can present them so much better. You can, you can pick the line up, a lighter line up off the water much better than you can if using a heavier line. And that just gives you that presentation that you need to catch those better fish. For me, this time of year is all about caster and emp fishing. It's a great bait, really is a great bait. It, it tends to help you be able to get through the small fish. And I never ever come to this river without plenty of bait because I think it's one of those places that it actually benefits from you attacking it. I'll always have three pints of casters and three pints of egg with me as a minimum. On, on pegs like this you can get through four, four pints of casters sometimes but I'll always have three or four pints of casters, three pints of them and also bronze maggots with a few reds in. You can always start to feed bronze maggot over the top with chub if you start to run out. But it's all about putting the bait in, constantly feeding. The nice thing about rivers and pegs like this is it's the perfect self-regulating feeding pattern. You cast out, it's where you want to be, feed, 
run down. I'm, f I'm actually loading my catapult at the same time as I'm fishing like that. Let the rig go down. And there you go, there's a good fish. That just shows it. These fish have been threatening to come over my feed all the time. I missed a few bites. It's a good job by the feel of this. But yeah, they come onto the feed. And it's that, like I say, that's that self-regulating feeding pattern which really, really helps every time you cast out, every time you feed. It just means that you get into a routine. And river fishing and feeding is all about routines. It's about just having, look at that, lovely fish that, beautiful. It's about, that feeding pattern is about getting the fish to understand where the feed is landing. You feed in the same spot all the time. You fish around that feed and try and find out where the fish are. On some days, sunny days like this, the fish could easily be right on top of your feed. But on other days, they're right down the peg on the bottom of the riverbed and they're really hard to catch. So it's all about searching your swim with the right bait. Castor for me is the best bait by Country Mile. Hemp complements it totally because what it does is it gives you a bulk of feed that you can feed quite a lot of. You know, I'm feeding a lot of bait here. Every single cast I'm putting lots of bait in. Looks like I'm feeding too much, but chub are big hungry fish and you need to feed them and feed them in the same spot. And it's a case of, like I said, feeding in the same spot and fishing around that spot and trying to trick the fish into ca and catching them. And you'll, you'll find out where they are and you'll have a really good run of fish but then it'll change again. You know, you'll think, oh, I've sorted it now, the fish are two foot deep, halfway down with peg, or the fish are on the bottom. But the change, it changes, the flow's change. There's more fish coming to your peg. There's lots of small fish coming to your peg, so the, ro the, the chub might come up and start hitting your feed right at the start of the peg. Look at that, I can even catch one whilst I'm talking to you down the edge. A perch. <laughs> but it's one of those, it's one of those swims that's a, an aquarium it's a beautiful peg and it's full of fish just make sure you feed them and then you will catch them tackle wise is fairly straightforward this kind of type of fishing i'd say i've set up a 15 foot essential float rod which is ideal for control and everything i can get behind my stick float but largely speaking most of your rods just want to be 13 foot rods um, i'm using the 13 foot essential medium um, float rods. Basically, they're, they're a nice light rod, they've got plenty of action, there's no great snags here, it's clear water, as long as I keep the fish out of that far bank, it's not going to be a major problem. So I'd rather have a, I'd rather have a, a light tipped rod that casts better and I can strike hard. You know, I don't know where my, my, all my gear is going to be half the time because the, the rig is pulling down and because the rig's pulling down, I need to strike quite hard. And by striking hard, if I've got a stiff action rod, I've got a chance of breaking off on a, a big fish if it's going the wrong way. But uh, these rods are just perfect for it. 13 foot, medium action and light action. My waggler's got a light action on and the stick float's got medium action. Um, the reels, I'm using the new gold reels. Absolutely fantastic reels these are. Perfect for this kind of fishing. High retrieve shallow spool and they're just proper workhorses they, you know you can you're in and out fishing fast all the time and it's really really important that you can get back quick and get back fishing again you know if you if your gear's balanced then you, you're not going to get tangles and, and and twists from a high ratio reel no problem whatsoever just when you're hooking your casters just make sure you hook them properly when you're hooking your maggots then you just want to be Hooking them right, it's really, really important that you, you keep things... Oh, I've got a fish on there, look. <laughs> well, what a fantastic day we've had here on the Warwickshire Raven. I told you before, I love this place, and every time I come fishing here, I absolutely love it. It's not been as easy today as I thought it would be. It's a fantastic place, and I've caught a lot of fish, got, don't get me wrong, but it's been hard. We've had to chop and change. I've fished a waggler for a bit. I've gone on the stick, I've changed depths, I've moved shot around. I started on a big hook fishing double caster, 
caught a few fish on it, but they were they were weren't really feeding well. So I, I chopped chains, moved down diameter of lines down to our 12s and even our 10s at times to try and catch some. Down to 18 hook size, but then caught a few fish and then went back to a 16. I've worked really hard. I've hardly got any bait left at all, and it's just been one of those days where I had to work really hard. So let's get these fish back. Show you what I've caught. I've had a fantastic day, I've got to say. Lots and lots of fish of all sizes. I've had some really good chub, as you've seen. And it's just been one of those days where I've really enjoyed the day. Fantastic days fishing. And this river never ceases to amaze me. And there you go. Before I release them, we'll just lift them up. You can see, you can see there, there's a lot of fish there, some big old fish. Uh, and I can't wait to come here then. Again, fantastic place. Have a go on the rivers, it's superb at the moment.